It's here, the iPhone for every man, the iPhone SE. I'm gonna be calling this one the iPhone SE SE, the iPhone SE second edition. Go ahead and get this baby unpacked because this is about as excited as I've been for an iPhone in my memory. Still is gonna cost you a cool 400 US dollars. Dbrand keeps trying to one-up themselves, to send me something so ugly I couldn't possibly like it, and they keep sending me stuff that I think is cooler and cooler. So they provided this phone, thanks to Dbrand for that. Earpods, wired, not AirPods. You'll find a regular, non, like, you know, warp speed, fast charger, or anything like that, as well as a lightning cable. It looks and feels basically exactly like an iPhone 8. Even internally, this phone shares a lot of similarities with its predecessor. Wow, Face ID is gone. I didn't realize how small an iPhone 8 would feel until I went and picked one up in 2020. Not just a small phone, but a phone with a really small looking screen. I guess that's why Apple advertises reachability as one of the features of this device. The haptic home button that Apple switched over to with the iPhone 7 is obviously still here. And in fact, apparently the entire display assembly, so that would include the home button, is shared with the iPhone 8, but with a couple of caveats. One is that if you replace the home button, you can't expect to have Touch ID functionality unless you're Apple, in which case you wouldn't be interchangeably swapping the screen for an iPhone SE and an iPhone 8. You're not gonna be able to use True Tone. And then finally, obviously the iPhone 8 has 3D Touch and the iPhone SE does not. So even though that hardware might be there, if you put an iPhone 8 screen assembly onto an iPhone SE, it seems like it's locked out in software because it will not work. Other parts that are interchangeable between the two phones are apparently the Taptic engine, as well as apparently both the front and rear camera. Front one, so that's the same seven megapixel shooter that we saw in the original iPhone 8. Hello. Hello, I am taking an iPhone selfie. You don't have any 4K video recording like you would in the iPhone 11 and no slow motion selfies or slow fees. That one seems to be pretty much confirmed, but it's the rear camera that there's a little bit of conflicting information on. Hey David, what's up? What's up? It appears from iFixit's teardown that it's the same 12 megapixel module, but I did read another report that says what makes it better in the iPhone SE compared to the iPhone 8 is Apple's processing. So on a software level, it might know, hey, that's an iPhone 8 camera module and it may not work correctly. So we're gonna have to wait for the DIY community to figure out the nuances there. One other component that's, I guess, a little disappointing is the battery. So it looks like it's about 1800 milliamp hours and it looks like the same battery from the iPhone 8, but because it uses a new connector, it is not interchangeable. Let's get into what is new and or great about this thing. It's got three gigs of RAM, so that's 50% more than the iPhone 8. It's got some software improvements to the camera, including portrait mode, uh, better video stabilization, as well as red eye removal. It's now powered by the A13 Bionic processor, the same chip that Apple is using in the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. So on paper anyway, aside from RAM, this thing should perform nearly identically to those modern flagships at $400. One thing Apple doesn't specify on the product page that I was really curious about is whether the phone supports HDR video playback. So this is definitely playing back How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World in HDR, but this is only on a 625 nit peak brightness display, which means you're not getting the full HDR experience that you would on something like an iPhone 11 or iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max. At least it's got support for it though. Even on a 600 nit display, it'll look better than SDR. One other feature that shouldn't surprise me, but does is that the SE has wireless charging and IP67 water resistance. It shouldn't surprise me that much, I guess, because the iPhone 8 did have both of those features, but those are the kinds of things that I would expect Apple to kind of take away as a gotcha, you know, like, oh, you don't have another $300 to spend on an iPhone 11? Well, I guess you don't need wireless charging that badly. Really, the only killer apps for the iPhone 11 are the ultra-wide camera, because the main cameras are, as far as we can tell so far, relatively similar. 
the better selfie camera, so it's 12 versus 7 megapixels, and of course with 4K video recording, larger, better screen, it is a better screen, and then Face ID, which for some people is not even really a feature, and they wish Apple would just go back to Touch ID with the home button. I mean, it really is great. Touch ID is awesome. It's super intuitive to use. I've always loved it. And that's, that's, that's it. If my aunt was like, hey, I need a new phone, this is it. With one gotcha. David, 1800 milliamp hour battery and change. Garbage. I mean, okay, I think garbage is a bit of an overstatement, but like, is, is, that, is that a deal breaker for you? Could you even recommend it to someone? The iPhone 8 made its way down to almost $400 towards the very end of its life cycle. This is basically that, similar battery, but way newer processor, more RAM, and what are you giving up, 3D touch? I think this thing's a killer value. Besides, if Apple's history is anything to go on, they're probably gonna update this thing for like five years, given that it's got a brand new flagship chip in it. I think this is a great value. As long as you're not the kind of user who is going to expect, you know, nine hours of screen time, you know, 10 hours of screen time a day with some, with some tweaks like you made on the Android side. Would you guys wanna see this concept repeated by Android handset makers? If Samsung was like, hey, Galaxy S7, but with a Snapdragon 865 in it. Would you buy that? Day one. Day one. Day one. Day one, $400. Yeah, easy. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this unboxing of the iPhone SE, the truly unexceptionalist um, iPhone launch in quite some time. Don't forget to subscribe for all, that, for all that good unboxing stuff we do here. Doesn't this look amazing? Okay, guys, come on, petition. Hit up dbrand on Twitter to offer this skin configuration officially. Cause you know, if enough people make noise, they'll be like, ugh, you guys, blah, 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 we're dbrand, we're edgy, but they'll do it.